Guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Loudmouth MMA Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Steele. This week, a continuation in the Rewind series. We are doing UFC 2. Uh, last week, Mr. Matt was sick, so we decided to push it. Uh, I am still sick. Uh, it has moved from a chest cold. So if you listen to UFC 1, um, I had a chest cold. Uh, it is now a head cold. So congratulations <laughs> to me. Uh, it is moving around my body. Uh, Matt, welcome back. Matthew Hitchcock. What's up, buddy? Uh, where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, at Hitchcock87. Awesome. Everyone go add Matt on Twitter. Do it. Um, <clears throat> again, I just said it. I'm sick. I'm going to try my hardest to get through without coughing and that kind of stuff. Deal with it. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm trying to soldier on. I've been sick for three weeks. We're podcasting. What do you three want weeks, to do? man. We got a schedule. I got to do it. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. But you had like a stomach thing last week. Yeah, I just wasn't that. I, good I probably wouldn't record if that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you could pause it. And I'm just not. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's get into this one. This week it is UFC two. Like I said last week, or you know, not last week, but you guys know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, we've done UFC one already, of course. So please go check that out. This is UFC two. Um. Some literal blood sport shit. And initial thoughts, before I give all the stats, before I give all that kind of thing, which we're going to do every week, we're going to try to give as much information as we can. Um, I, I want to give my initial thoughts and hear your initial thoughts. Sure. Um, so my initial thoughts, first of all, I'm surprised that this happened. As yeah. I said in UFC 1. Yeah, you alluded to that a little bit. Yeah, and like I said in UFC 1, I really, you watch UFC 1, and obviously I know it continues. Yeah. Obviously. But you're like, how? Why? <laughs> But I was trying to think of it in the context of being there watching it live. Yeah. Right? And I, my thought was like, how in the world was a UFC 2 ever created, given <laughs> the shit show that UFC 1 was? And it was. Um, okay. Initial thoughts. One, super sad that Bill Wallace did not return. <laughs> I am... We had Kilmeade. Yeah, they had Kilmeade, man, and he was in the ring the last time, or yeah. in the octagon or whatever. He was in the octagon the last time around. He was doing, like, the... They were cutting to him to do, like, the kind of in-between fight stuff. Yeah. Um, or was he the post-fight interview guy? I don't remember. Yeah. But he did something in UFC 1. The ring announcer was that guy that repeated everybody's last name, which I always loved. Why did he the, do that? I don't know. I've always wondered. Like, he would go, like, uh, to, so to give you guys an example, that I can't remember, his name is like, his, <laughs> his nickname was like something, the G-Man? Let me see. It was the G-Man. It was G -Man. something like that. I'm really almost silly. positive. His nickname was the G-Man, and he could not be any more white. <laughs> like he looks like he was born you know what I mean like in like the suburbs of oh he was awesome a cushy city he I mean he's so funny like he is white white and his nickname <laughs> is the G-Man and like whenever they would cut to him they'd be like and now to the G-Man to hear what he, and it was so funny I was like the dude is so white this like, event had so much more personality <laughs> it did so much more personality. so second initial thoughts and I think you agree because we talked a little bit beforehand way better like, Way this was better. more enjoyable than UFC 1. It was blood UFC sport. 1, I enjoyed for a couple different reasons because uh, how odd it was. The spectacle of it. It was very enjoyable. It was, it was so weird. Bill Wallace, just, he was so much fun. Yeah. And I don't think he ever returns, which I'm, I'm not, super sad about. I'm not sure. Because he was so wonderful in UFC 1. But listen. I understand why they didn't bring him back for UFC 2. He was horrendous. Can't have him burping all over the place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> but uh, but anyway, okay. so the G-Man, the ring announcer, I can't remember the man's name. It, it doesn't matter. Not for, important. For our purposes right now. If your we'll, nickname's G-Man, your real name is not yeah, important. Yeah, listen, if your nickname is the G-Man and you're that white, your name doesn't matter. You earned that somehow. You earned it, man. I don't know how he earned the G-Man. How but, did you do that? <laughs> um, okay, so here's what he would do. So he would give your stats. So I'll, 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 I'll try to do it like, like in my name. He'd be like, you know, fighting out of Dayton, Ohio, you know, style karate. Uh, he would give some other stats, maybe like height and weight, something like that. And he would go, my nickname in, 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 when I played football was Iron Man, of course, my last <laughs> name's Steel. So he'd be like, Kyle, the Iron Man Steel. And there'd be applause. And then he'd go, Steel. <laughs> so it weird. was the weirdest thing in the world. Why Boys, did he do that? Gracie. 
Gracie. Yeah, it was so weird. <laughs> so weird. Like, he would say their name, and then he would pause, and people would, like, applaud, and then he would say their last name I again. Don't get it. I have no idea. Thank goodness Bizarre. It stick. Listen, I- I'm sure there's a reason, and, and we are not, we- we're not approaching these, and I know that we probably should. It's just not my style. We're not approaching these Rewind episodes as historians. I'm, I have no interest in that. that that's, yeah. that's what we should do. But listen, leave that up to the guys who are better at that. We're 2018 fans going back and you know rewatching I mean? events. Yeah. yeah. Now, you have been a fan for a very long not, time. Not quite that long, obviously. But you've that been was, a fan but, since early UFC. Yeah. You, you were a big pride fan. Like You've been in the sport for a long time. I'm just not interested in the... the and Because I, I consider it boring. I don't want to write a history book on this stuff. Yeah. I want to watch the events, and I want to have a good time talking about them. I have a fan experience. So there you go, guys. I'm just letting you know, if you're listening to this, and, and, and rightfully so, you're expecting this to be like a hardcore, everything you need to know, this probably isn't going to be the podcast for you, because you, it's, it's really not going to be that. You came to make a little bit of fun. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, it, I'm, I'm going the fights. fun angle. That's my goal. I'm, I, I want to make it fun. Um Okay. Came to the right place in that regard. But I will give you quite a bit of information. So the first thing I'm going to give you... Okay, so this took place uh, once again in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Came so, back to Colorado. <clears throat> I did not realize um, how important Colorado was to the birth of the UFC. I yeah. mean, the first two UFCs were both in Colorado. And I'd imagine that moving forward, um, they're going to be in Colorado quite a bit as well. So um, I did not know that. So that's pretty cool. That was That was a good thing to learn. Um, the date for this one was March 11th, 1994. I don't remember UFC 1's date, but it was a 93. It was the end of 93. I don't think this is even a full half a year later. Okay, very cool. Um, so they're, they're going quick. Attendance much lower. Uh, it has it at 2,000. Um, however, when I was looking, and it's not on here, I saw it on another, uh, of course. Mm. Okay, there it was. This event did a buy rate of 300,000. Jesus Louise. Yes, which was really? quite a bit more than UFC 1. Wow. Yeah, so huge buy rate increase. 300,000 is more than... It's more than a DJ headline in exactly. a Fox card. Yeah, Jesus I mean, Christ. that is more than like a lot of UFC cards right now. I know. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, I never knew that. See, about, about these old events, I never knew the buy rates. <laughs> Um, and I also, can I just say to my favorite line that, uh, Brian Kilmeade says, um, I, was it, was it Brian Kilmeade? No, it was the other guy. So the, the commentating team was Jim Brown returned. Yes. Was a lot better. Yes. I think what made Jim Brown rough the first time, one, it was brand new. He didn't know what he was doing no whatsoever. Clue. He at least had a better idea now. Yeah. He gave it the old college try. <clears throat> and also he didn't have. Football setups every five minutes, less than every five minutes. Yeah, which was just horrendous yeah. <laughs> with with the, with the first event. Kilmeade was a definite. Improvement. Kilmeade was a dramatic improvement on that on that board, which is why they put him there. I think they probably knew that. Yeah. Um. So, two things on the commentating team. One of the guys, and I can't remember his name, but he was also one of the co-creators of the UFC. What was his name? Uh, it was Ben Perry. That was the other guy. My favorite line. One. So in this event, there was a very large opening round where there was eight fights or 16 fights in the opening round. No, it was eight. Yeah, it was eight fights. 16 One, competitors, two, three, I think. Four. Yeah, it was eight fights in the opening round. We did not watch the opening round because it was not televised. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure how to go find it, but I don't really care. I mean, we watched what we needed to watch. So I'm I'm cool with it, but it's not it wasn't televised anyway. So a lot of people haven't seen it. If you go on UFC Fight Pass and you watch the event, you can't watch those fights either, right? It starts at the quarterfinals. Um, <coughs> I believe the first Gracie fight was televised. Gracie versus Ishihara, yeah, which was the last fight of the opening round. I also think that was the fight where the announcer, the in-ring announcer, called it Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, <laughs> which I thought was so funny. Well, my favorite was Ben Perry goes, he, he was introducing Scott Morris, who I believe was an alternate. Yes, I think he was too. Let me look. And by the way. No, no, he wasn't. He defeated Sean Daughtry in the opening round. Either way, poor But Scott. anyway, 
But poor anyway, Scott. So yeah, poor Scott. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But when he was introducing Scott Morris, he goes, "We don't know much about Scott Morris because he is a ninja." <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was, he was a self-proclaimed ninja. That's so funny. <laughs> Him and Fred Edish, I think, get a lot of shit because they seem kooky. Well, Fred Edish seemed like a fish out of water. I mean, when he, and he seemed kooky, he walked in, he looked like he was, like, appropriating Japanese culture. You know what I mean? He yeah, like 170 pounds with a crucifix hey, in his pocket. Yeah, I mean, he just, he he looked goofy. And and Scott Morris came in looking like, I don't know, like, like a redneck. I mean, it was just a bizarre... He was at least a pretty big, formidable-looking guy. Sure. And, yeah. you know, he fights, and I don't want to get into that just we'll yet. We'll get there. We'll but, get there. But, yeah, we'll, we'll go through fight by fight here and, and give a little bit of detail. Um, okay, the other thing I wanted to say, too, the inter- the interview guy after the fights, I don't remember who that guy was, but he was quite possibly... The worst thing about the vent, probably the worst thing about these early UFCs. Period. Yeah. Do you remember him interviewing people after fights? Mm. It was like I would walk out and be like, "So you did this thing? What do you think?" And he would like put the microphone in their face, and like <laughs> it would like catch them off guard. It, it reminded me of like there's like an SNL skit where, um, oh my gosh, what did Bill Hader is like the old man. <laughs> And they keep cutting to him, and he's like, what do you want? And he like, shoves the microphone in people's faces to interview. <laughs> like, that was how the guy was. It was bizarre. It was rough. It was really bizarre. Yeah. Like, he'd be like, well, now that you're done, what are you going to do next? And he like, put him in there. It was so weird. I'm going to get I was my like, paycheck. Is he, and is he mad? I'm like, who celebrate? hurt him? Maybe have some dinner. It was weird. <laughs> it was really strange. And he would, like, he would be like, so you just did that thing, and now you're going to do this thing here, so what are you going to do? Boom. Like, all right, well. So those post fight interviews did not get off. I I imagine they get better as yeah. we're going through. I think everybody's but, working at their craft here. <laughs> everyone's trying to figure it out. But yeah. and the guy looked like Scott Bayo, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it, it wasn't. I mean, listen, could have been. Could have been Scott Bayo. <laughs> There's a been. real possibility that it was Scott Bayo. I don't think it was. <laughs> but I remember him looking. I remember watching it, being like, "Why is this guy so abrupt?" And B, why does he look like Scott Bayo? Um. He probably looks nothing like Scott Payne. That's a name <laughs> That's I haven't just... thought of in a long time, man. <laughs> That's probably just what I'm thinking in my head. All right, do you want to get into the actual event? Any okay. any other pre-event thoughts? No, man. Nothing? I, I just I, I loved <laughs> I loved this one. I thought it was some blood sport shit. So all these early UFCs had names. The first one was called The Beginning, aptly. Um, the second one was called No Way Out. Um, and for those of you wondering, UFC 3 was called The American Dream, <laughs> which I'm interested as to why that was the name. We're going to get there next we week. We will oh, get there. 3 is a good one. Um, okay. There was a little bit of a change for this one. Um, so we already know that, that it had no weight classes or weight limits. Um, but this time they did not have rounds whatsoever. No rounds. I think in the first one you did have a break. In between, I, I believe we saw it one time. All one round fights. This is all run round, round. Um, and then of course you have no judges. Um, competitors could only win, of course, by submission, uh, knockout, or of course throwing the towel in, which happens. That's basically how most of these fights end. Pretty essentially. frequently, they either you tap or somebody gets the towel thrown. Yeah, in. a lot of the corners seemed a little bit more educated going into <laughs> UFC too. There were a lot of guys that were more concerned with the safety of their, yeah. their fighter. A lot of towels getting thrown in. Yeah, in this one. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is the debut of Big John McCarthy. Yep. Um, and I want to add something. I, I talked to uh, my resident UFC historian, Mr. Keith Schillen, uh, from the MMATakeover.com. And uh, him and I were talking on the phone. He, he told me that uh, Big John McCarthy was at UFC 1. He, in fact, was a bouncer. Apparently at UFC one. Interesting. So he was there. He just was not refing. I didn't know that. Um, so he did make his debut refing in UFC two. He looked so young. Yeah, he was so young. And he also wasn't very good. He did. He wasn't catching people yeah, tapping. He, yeah, I mean, it he, was. Uh, he let poor Scott just stumble around yeah, and fall I all mean, over the place. But listen, th- I mean, that is. I'm sure he went through the same things as everybody else. Yeah, like, no clue. what the fuck is going on here? What like, am I supposed to be doing? Yeah, I mean, we're just do we're I, just trying to make it work. Do I go and hold that guy's hand up, or do I pick this guy up off the ground who's stumbling all over the yeah. fucking place? Crazy. Okay, so like I said, we did not watch the opening round. Um, I'm not going to give all of the um, results for it, because it's, it's just going to be a flood of information that you really don't need. Um, and then just remember, and, and I'll... I'll try to point it out. I know Fred Edish was an alternate. I know that for sure. Um, 
And I think that's it. Okay, that's the only alternate. So Frank Homaker, I believe is his name. Mm-hmm. Fra- Frank Homaker, Hom- he uh, won by submission arm lock in the opening round. However, he was injured and had to withdraw. So Fred Edish did not fight in but the got to come first. In. Let me make sure. Yep, did not fight in the first. He was just an alternate that was there at the event. So, uh, big thing with that, he looked completely out of place. Oh, he had a rough There's night. a reason why he was an alternate. Oh, um, okay, so let's start. The first fight of the quarterfinals was, of course, Pat Smith, who was in UFC 1. I don't remember who said. Did he make it? He got stopped by Ken Shamrock. Yeah, he got. I think he got choked by. No, it might have. He might have got. It was leg the lock. leg. It was the leg yeah. lock. Yeah, he got leg locked by Ken Shamrock. Um, okay, so Patrick Smith defeats Scott Morris. Poor Scott Morris, the guy Scott. we're talking about. Uh, it was a KO. It happened within thirty seconds. Hey, y'all want to? And see, it was brutal. Y'all want to see Pat Smith kill a guy, bro? <laughs> so I want to stop on this fight for a minute here. Uh. I really like Pat Smith. Yeah, he was awesome back in the day. Professional kickboxer, professional boxer, professional MMA fighter. Like I said, I'm coming into this real late. I did not know who Pat Smith was. Bad motherfucker. Because in UFC 1, he got defeated pretty easily and quickly by Ken Shamrock. Yeah. Um, He comes, he he was a very, very, he he was good on the mic uh, whenever he got a chance to. He was good on the mic. He was a good looking dude. Big dude. Um... Again, he had the boxing. The other thing is he seemed he felt like to me one of the first guys to really understand what was happening. It was like it was like as soon as UFC one ended, he went straight to the gym and hired a jujitsu guy. Exactly. It was he like was he one of the first right guys to, to really figure out, hey, it just because I'm a really good boxer doesn't mean anything. I didn't I, even get I a have chance to, to be box. Well, because it doesn't matter. It's yeah. gonna get these guys are gonna get past it and I'm gonna get my limbs torn off, and he was the first guy. It, it feels like, and this may not be completely accurate, of course, but you know we're just a little bit of hyperbole here. Yeah, we're spitballing. He, he really feels like one of the first guys to really figure that out. He was awesome, man. especially of not of the big names. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Ken Shamrock, you could argue was kind of there too, but but different, right? Because Ken Shamrock, of course, prolific and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, he he understood grappling. Before this ever happened. Yeah. Yeah. See, Pat Smith didn't. Yeah. He went into that first fight being like, I'm going to box the fuck out of this guy and be done. Kick this dude. And it didn't happen. And he went, okay, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to make sure that nobody can get me these leg locks anymore. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that nobody can get a hold of my arms. If I lose, it's going to be to hoist. Yeah. (laughs) That that was like the attitude he had. He was like, nobody's beating me this time except for the fucking master. And spoiler alert. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. Moving on down. We have Johnny Rhodes. That is the guy who fought Fred Edish. Ooh, savage. Like I said, Fred Edish was an alternate. He looked com- both. I would say both Scott Morris and Fred Edish. If there were two things that jumped out at me, those two guys looked the most out of place. But at the time, I doubt they necessarily did. I doubt they necessarily looked that yeah. out of place at the time. Now you look at it and you go, "This is a mismatch." Oh, those are the guys that have the videos on YouTube where they're using their aura to knock people down. Some- Chi knockouts. That's right. That's yeah. what they looked like. They looked like those types of guys. That posture that, that like Edish had on the ground. You have like the Edish, you have like the Fred Edish defense, defensive arts, where he's like, he's doing like Wang Chung or whatever, and he's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Blasting people back with one finger. Like, that's what they look like. They look yeah. like those types of guys. And no disrespect to either one of them. And especially Fred Edish, who I'm actually friends with on Facebook, and it seems like a really cool dude. No disrespect whatsoever. But at the time, you're looking at them and, and yeah, you're looking is- back at it now 25 years ago and you're like those guys look like those dudes like they look like those dudes that had the home videos who yeah exactly exactly and it showed some, some <laughs> they black got the belts fights. and bullshit suit. yeah and bullshit suit, exactly <laughs> um so yeah johnny rhodes he, he bulldog choked him within a couple minutes and he just he controlled him the entire fight at no Beat point too, at man. no point it wasn't even competitive the first two fights were not competitive whatsoever in fact the first foot the entire quarterfinals weren't competitive. No, they were all just They were all just savage. pretty much dominant. Um, so the third fight, you had uh, a guy named Rimko Pardo, who I liked a lot. Um, again, my resident historian has told me that Pardo actually was kind of a shitty dude, which I did not know this. I didn't either. Um, I know and I don't remember exactly what he told me. So maybe for UFC, UFC 3, I'll kick off with what he had told me. Okay. But apparently he's done a bunch of kind of shady stuff. He was um, huge, man. He was a so. Remember the guy who was in the first. This much I do remember. 
<coughs> this savat guy, uh, Gordo. Mm-hmm. He is a student of Gordo. Oh, well, that makes total sense, because Gordo's yep. a fucking asshole, too. Yeah, so he was a student of his. Um, but anyway, Pardo uh, went up against Orlando uh, Orlando West. Wist was his name? Yeah, something like no, that. it was like Wyatt. Uh, it's W-I-E-T. I can't remember the exact pronunciation. Something more. like that, yeah. Um, okay. I was trying to look for a pronunciation, but I can't. It's not here. Man, I wish I remembered. It's not jumping out at me. But what is jumping out at me, so he was a lot smaller than Pardo. Like, Way 100 pounds. smaller. I mean, he, he was a lot smaller. Yeah. But man, he looked apart. Yeah. He Didn't was, he look apart? He was jacked. Dude, yeah. he looks like a guy now out there that in, would fight at like featherweight or lightweight, maybe. Out there in like a Speedo or something. Big yeah. shoulders, big chest. Yeah, he, he looked he, he looked, looked apart. good. He looked apart. But he just, again, he got stuck underneath a dude who was 100 pounds heavier. That literally what happens is Pardo, Pardo takes him down. He has 100 pounds on Can you on even call easily. it a takedown? It was like no, the dude wrapped really. him up and, and, and he just, Remco just like sat down on him. And yeah. he used that technique throughout the night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he basically just kind of... He was just like, oh, you want to take me down here? I'll sit he on you. He basically just got him down. Yeah. We, we won't say take down. He kind of just got him down yeah. using pure body Fell weight. Fell into top position. And what was crazy, this was funny, he lays on top of him. He really doesn't do anything. Yeah, just kind of starts shifting the positions around, out a little shifting bit, around, moving a little bit. shifting around, shifting around, and then finally, oh, your head's right unleashes there. Unleashes fury. Boom, yep, there it boom. is. Fight over. Yeah, just massive Tal elbows gets thrown on in, the fights skull. Over. But that's a guy who, again, with wake. I'm interested. I know nothing. I'm not going to look ahead. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I hope this guy comes back. Yeah. I hope this Orlando guy comes back when there's weight classes. Now, I don't know how old he was at the time. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know anything about I'd have either. to do some research that I'm, that I'm just not going to do. But <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I the, He looked like he had it. He looked like he had the part. So I don't know. But again, at some point, size does matter. It matters in a fight like that. It was so funny watching the It doesn't the matter in BJJ as we, again, keep coming to find out. It does matter in a fight like that. There wasn't even any BJJ involved in this one. It was so weird because he just like, <clears throat> it was like, he looked down and he was just like, "Oh, his head's right there." No, like he didn't I mean that's no. That's what I'm saying. Like it was so weird in a, in a fight like this with Orlando's skill set. Size matters. Oh yeah, hundred percent. When when he fights a guy like Gracie, size doesn't matter. He couldn't even right? move. That's the equalizer. He just got laid on. Um, okay, and then the other fight in the quarterfinals, the final fight was Hoist Gracie taking on Jason Jason Delusha. I believe it's Delusha. Yes. Um, he submits him with an arm lock about a minute in. Again, none of these first couple fights, these four fights, the entire quarterfinals, none of them were competitive. That was a nasty arm bar, That's the, the best way to put it is none of them were competitive. Yeah, and all nasty finishes, really. That I mean, belly down arm bar is yep. vicious. Yep. It's the worst one. Um, all right, so moving on to the semifinals. We have Patrick Smith taking on Johnny Rhodes. Again, I don't remember it being competitive. I remember Pat Smith kind of rolling through him. Yep. He lasted about a minute and 10 seconds. I think it seconds. was a standing guillotine. It was. Yeah. It was a standing guillotine. First standing guillotine in the history of the UFC. <coughs> right there. Um, that it, shows a guy who was who was learning a craft right there, who did not want to lose the same way he lost before. Again. Yeah. Like I said, he seemed like the first guy to really embrace it. I loved him, man. He was awesome. He was one of my favorite guys from the old days. And That's he always another has guy. Been. I hope he comes back, man. I think he I has. haven't. I haven't looked into it. I hope he comes back. I think he does. You can. Um, okay, that was Pat Smith. The other semifinal was Hoist Gracie, of course, taking on Rimcor Pardo. So again, I, I I don't know if we necessarily gave us uh, very much information about Pardo. Um, first of all, he thought he was going to lose the first fight. J- literally came out and said it. Um, looked really nervous going into the next fight. Um, he loses to Hoist Gracie. He tried that same sit down takedown on Hoist, but Hoist was way squirrelier. And, and here's the thing: Gracie was smaller than Orlando by a lot. Well, I don't know by a lot than Orlando, but, but he, he was, was definitely so much smaller, smaller than Rimco. Oh, I mean, he, goodness, he was Rimco had to have, and this was the fight. So Rimco gets in the cage; they're getting ready to start the fight. I paused it, and I went again because I'm coming into this so late. I know that Gracie wins, but, but you want to see how? How, how he, I'm like, yeah. how in the world is he going to beat this guy? This guy is massive. He tried that. He's same not very skilled, down. but he is massive. And I'm like, at some point, I don't care how 
your BJ. I know it doesn't matter. Like if a guy is that much bigger, like it has to matter at some yeah. point. Nope, didn't matter. The, it, the fight lasted one minute and thirty one seconds, and he gets lapel choked. Hoist took his back, grabbed his gi, strangled him. I mean, just, and he looked he looked like he was in pain. Too. Just it looked nonsense. Rough. It, looked it rough. was just, and that was the moment too for me at the end of that fight. And I went. Yeah, I get it now. I get. I understand the Gracie thing. Yeah, I understand the hype. I understand why they're constantly talked about. I get it. One hundred and seventy pound dude versus the world, and he I always mean, wins. And I get it. It's. I mean, it. It is so impressive to watch a guy like that, you know, choke out somebody who's so much bigger than them. It's. It's just an incredible in a real fight like this. Isn't this isn't fake fake Chung? I mean, I mean this still is an holds the actual record. fight. He still holds the record for most, most submissions. submissions yeah. yeah. No, but I'm just saying, like, you know, again, I know everyone listening to this is probably very well informed fans, but just in case you're not and, and you really don't know a lot, you know, it, it, this isn't fake. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and to see someone in a not fake fight who is so much smaller than their opponent be able to choke the life out of them is insane. You know what I mean? Dudes that inspired. You know, dude, the, the, dude think about it this way. Of think thousands about this way. of people. Take the ref out of the octagon. Take the corners out. Hoist Gracie could have killed that man. Oh, and that's what it was. That man is a trained fighter who has a hundred plus pounds on him. He could have murdered him. Yeah, a hundred. It's insane. A hundred, two hundred years that. ago, you put those dudes in a field. Only Hoist, Hoist Gracie out wins. That field. Hoist Gracie wins. Yeah, that other and dude's nobody dead. would have expected him to win. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I, it's like it can't be understated enough, or it can't be overstated enough. How incredible at the time Hoist Gracie was. He was a true killer. And and here's the other thing. So so a lot of people will do this, okay? And and I understand why people do this, but they will delegitimize Hoist Gracie because they'll say, we'll put Hoist Gracie up against Woodley. Yeah, that doesn't matter. There was no Woodley in 94. That's, see, and that's what people need to remember. Yeah. In, in, in 25 years, you're going to be saying the same thing about John Jones. You're going to say, put John Jones in there with P- Professor our, our, X. Our current champ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you're, you're going to be saying the same thing about the guys who are incredible now. The fight game's fixed. Guys like John Jones. You're going to be, you're going to be saying, cause they're, we're already doing it with Anderson Silva. You go take Anderson Silva in his prime, put him up against this guy. Anderson Silva doesn't stand a chance. Well, I also think he's you're, kind of delegitimized his legacy lately, too. <laughs> by by the, taking the Ken Shamrock fight in Bellator and stuff? No, Anderson, just with all the popping. Oh, I thought you were talking about um, Gracie. No. I was like, Gracie can't really. There's nothing <laughs> that they could do no, to no, really no. De- delegitimize anything. No, but it's uh, it's incredible, man. And, and and so I just want to tell that to people. You, you will hear people do that where they say, well, put Hoist Gracie up in there. Because it's true. Take Hoist Gracie and put Hoist Gracie in there with a low-level welterweight. And that low-level welterweight probably beats them. Mm-hmm. Probably beats Hoist in their prime. If you take the guy then. In a fight. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter because again, and, and I want to stress this, you will always be saying that. You will always look at whoever the king is now, and in twenty years, you're gonna say because people that John Jones is the best example, because people can't even wrap their minds around that. In twenty years, you're gonna be looking at John Jones and saying, Man, John Jones couldn't touch these guys. You, I'm, I promise you, you're Probably. going to be saying it. I promise. Because that's what happens. That's how this works. It's happened with football. Football's been around for a long time, and people keep thinking, well, the game isn't going to revolutionize because it's always it's it's been around for so long. It Every five years, there's a cycle. Guys get faster. Guys get taller. Guys get stronger. Guys New jump higher. Guys jump. New, things and things come about. And conditioning programs. That is how that's – fighting won't even probably – you know what I mean? It'll look the same, but it'll there's these little micro movements that are going to change. So could Hoist Gracie beat low level guys now, right in his prime? Probably not. But but it doesn't matter because he was so light years ahead of everybody else. How many of these guys, like top fifteen, do you think he could beat in pure grappling today? That's a curiosity of mine. Not, not many. I really. I think Hoist, in grappling, okay, just pure grappling. Pure, I think, if so, if you took out like, like there's no punching, there's no anything. Put like put him in like the EBI. Yeah, put, put, okay, hoist sure. It, like EBI and put him against like a, a low top fifteen guy. He probably, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm I'm curious about something like that. I, I would I would maybe give the edge to him. But remember when he fought Matt Hughes? Came yep. back and fought Matt and just got smashed. <laughs> um, okay, so like we said, the uh, that was the semifinals. We're gonna wrap this episode up. The finals. Hoist Gracie, Patrick Smith. Patrick Smith was on a fucking tear. He was on a tear yeah. coming into these finals. I mean, it looked like he was unstoppable. He looked like 
he had an approach going into the hoist fight where he was just like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to give it my best shot. But if I end up underneath of this dude, I'm just going to go ahead and quit while I'm ahead and not get my arm broken or my neck What's crushed. What's funny is he didn't even get submitted. Yeah, no. Yeah, it did. He got punched out. Yeah. But it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I just think also he really, he didn't want to sit minute, down there and take more damage. Minute and 17 seconds. He knew he was beat. You yep. know what I mean? He knew he was beat. Minute and 17 seconds. The, the, well... They actually threw the towel in his corner, threw the towel in. He did try, though. But, and here's what I loved. When they went to Pat Smith after, he was not mad that they threw the towel in. No, they, him and no. Hoist were. Because that's what the announcers were saying. And, yeah. The announcers were like, oh, he's not going to be happy yeah, about that. Yeah, this is not good. They, they didn't give the him a chance. Too early. They didn't give him a chance. But Pat was like, I, I was beat. And he was. He probably told Listen, his corner. He wasn't even. going anywhere. Yeah. He, he, was getting, he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. Who yeah. had gone anywhere? Yeah, I mean, Hoist, Hoist was going to keep him right there yeah. for as long as he wanted. He knew he was beat. Um, all right, guys, that is it. We're trying to keep these at a half an hour. I appreciate everybody listening. Um, like we said, if, if there's anything, any suggestions you want to make, please come at us. Let us know. Um, I've had a couple, and I didn't. I tried to give one. One of the advice was, hey, try to give a little bit more about the fights. Mm-hmm. I think we did that this time. I think we went into we more had detail than we did fights. last time. We had better fights this yeah. time around. We really did. So, uh, if, if you guys have any suggestions, please let us know. We out.